I believe he will not bring up Bill Clinton's personal life. I do believe there's a possibility he'll talk about Hillary Clinton's uh, uh, situation if, uh, if, if, it gets, if it gets to that. I don't think he prefers to do that, but I think he will. The Clintons had a, a, a rough time in their marriage 20 years ago. That was litigated out uh, at this debate uh, tonight and in this, the rest of this campaign. We want to focus on the issues, and that's what Hillary's going to do. Well, we don't know what's going to happen in this debate. Let's just be honest. Uh, anything really could happen in this debate at Washington University today. Donald Trump was very active on Twitter. Uh, first about Wisconsin. Thank you to my great supporters in Wisconsin. I heard that the crowd and enthusiasm was unreal. That's about the cheering that uh, interrupting Paul Ryan and others at that event. Tremendous support, except for some Republican leadership. Thank you. Uh, so many self-righteous hypocrites watch their poll numbers and elections go down. And then tweeting out exclusive video, Broderick uh, Willie Jones to Bill's defenders. These are crimes terrified of enabler. Hillary there talking about uh, interviews with accusers of uh, former President Bill Clinton of uh, affairs and worse. Uh, let's bring in our panel. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard. Monica Crowley, editor and columnist for the Washington Times. Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com. And David Kennedy, senior politics writer for U.S. News and World Report. Okay, Monica, you first. Um, for Donald Trump, I just talked to Senator Sessions. You know, they are seeing a lot of Republican defections. Mm -hmm. Is this, you know, the moment? What do you think about tonight? This is the moment for Donald Trump to step up and try to salvage his campaign. The United States is a country of second chances. Americans love a comeback story, so this is his moment to try to maximize the opportunity that's before him. He has a real chance to show that he is modest and humble and contrite, not characteristics necessarily associated with Donald Trump. This is his chance to show the American people that side of him. And remember, we do have precedents for this. We had Bill Clinton being accused when he was running. We had Arnold Schwarzenegger running for governor of California being accused of groping women. We had Barack Obama facing tapes of a racist anti-American preacher in Jeremiah Wright. We had Richard Nixon going back some, some years with the Checkers speech. They were all able to salvage their candidacies and go on to win when they handled it the right why, way. Why is this different, though? Because we heard Donald Trump with this, this audio, it seems to be cutting through much more. Is it because... It, why? It's because it reinforces the stereotype that everyone thought was true about Donald Trump, that he treated women abhorrently and repugnantly, and now it's on tape, and there is likely more tapes. I think Donald Trump is in almost an irreparable position in this race. I think it is unlikely that he can come back and win the presidency. I just got off the phone with a top aide who says he describes the campaign in two words, disarray and trepidation about what is next. There's little direction from the top. They're not hearing. I mean, look, people are voting. They're voting this week. There's been no direction from the top. There's rumors floating all around. And let's remember, Donald Trump was behind in this race before this tape by three to six points nationally in most battleground states. And most importantly, he is the first Republican in 60 years to likely lose the white vote with college educated, with, with college educated whites. And he is behind regardless of his position in the race with minorities. So I just think it is unlikely for him to come back no matter what kind of performance happens he, tonight. Puts, he puts together tonight. Guy, you hear Trump supporters and this palpable frustration that, you know, the WikiLeaks does not get covered. The things about uh, Hillary Clinton doesn't get any play, any place. It doesn't break through. Uh, fair criticism? To some extent, although we're going to cover it later on the show, and I think Donald Trump has a huge platform to bring it up and really drive that narrative in front of 80, 90 million people tonight. I think, again, we'll have a huge tune-in factor. But I think the point is so important for the frustration among Trump supporters. They're treating some of them like this whole tape being released as the turning point in the race. If you look at the Real Clear Politics polling averages in the states heading into tonight, most of that data long before uh, any of this tape controversy blew up, Hillary Clinton currently sitting at 340 electoral votes based on that polling. So now I think there's no sugarcoating it. The Republican Party is in a very precarious situation because people down ballot from Donald Trump who are distancing themselves, they're trying to do so because most voters are repulsed by what Trump said, but they're also really infuriating Trump and his base, and he's egging them on. So they're going to lose voters one way or the other. This is not one big happy family heading into November. Steve, three of the four Trump tweets today dealt with Republicans. 
Yeah. That was Republicans. Now you have down ballot races, as Guy mentions. You have the Senate hanging in the balance. And frankly, I mean, is it possible that you that there's hope for Democrats in the House? Yeah, I think it is possible that there's hope for Democrats in the House. What, what strikes me in, in reporting this for the last 48 hours, talking probably in total to a couple dozen different Republican officials, elected officials, RNC people, uh, staff, is the two different conversations that are taking place in American politics right now. On the one hand, you have conversations mostly like the one that we're having and have been having, which involves can Donald Trump recover? Can he turn in a good debate performance? If he apologizes, will people forgive him? And then the, the other people I'm talking to, candidates, strategists, people working on Senate races, down ballot races, the, the questions that they're addressing is, how big a bloodbath is this? How catastrophic is this? Are we talking about losing both houses of Congress this year? Are we talking about losing them in such a bad way that the Republican Party is irreparably harmed or harmed for the next decade? It's, it's a sense of catastrophe that you hear from Republican officials, from conservative movement but types. You know what I hear on Twitter? Is that this is the same stuff you heard at the beginning of the primary. This is what they type, you know, like, hey, yeah, nobody said Trump was going to do anything, and then he turned it around and won the nomination. But I hear what you're saying. It's just, a, I mean, look, I get why Trump supporters would say that. I would be making the same argument if I were a Trump supporter. You're talking about vastly different circumstances where you had 17 candidates in the Republican primary and a media that was eager to egg Donald Trump on as he beat up conservatives. Now you have a media that's totally hostile to Donald Trump in favor of Hillary Clinton's worldview ideologically and is eager to see her elected. It's a totally different, and it's a one-on-one -on -one race. I think the split that Steve is talking about is real, but I also think it reflects a deeper split in the country between the elites and everybody else. When you go on social media or you talk to regular Americans, they don't really care about what Donald Trump said 11 years ago. They care about the serious issues facing the country today, a weak economy, no job creation, wage stagnation, an open border, an existential threat from Islamic terror. That's what they want to hear Donald Trump talking about tonight. That's what they want to hear Hillary Clinton talking about tonight. Not this stuff from 11 years ago. So while the elites are wrapped up in it, regular Americans are. Right, you know, can, I call, just, can I just but, jump but, in on that? Regular Americans. I, mean, I talk to regular Americans. I don't just talk to elites. I talk to people in Wisconsin. I'm, I'm emailing and texting with folks who are not at all elites, who have never been elites, are never going to be elites. They're disturbed by this. They're frustrated by this. They don't like what Donald Trump has said and done over the course of the election. Maybe some of them were never Trump supporters. Maybe they will be Trump supporters. Right, but it's right. not just but the election. I'm not excusing it, Steve. I'm not excusing what he said. What I'm saying is that most average voters want their current issues and the life and the future of the country dealt with an address. If you're talking, about, issue, if you're talking about issues, that's, issues. that's fair. Yes. If you're talking about turning to issues. But I don't think it's only the elites that are troubled by what Donald Trump has said. No, but and that's Trump, not what Trump, I said. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Last word. Trump has a decision to make tonight about whether he wants to make it about issues. And will he bring up Bill Clinton's indiscretions and infidelities in the past, or will he make it about issues? I think that is an open question of which route he's going to take. But he's going to stay in the race. Oh, I, absolutely. I, I, he's definitely staying in the definitely. race. Stay in the race? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to see him leaving.